Welcome to the Spine and Rehab Specialists podcast series. My name is Harry Koster, physical therapist and the host of this podcast. We are a physical therapy company with multiple clinics in the El Paso, Texas area. Each episode, we will go over a different physical therapy or general health related topic just to give you more insight in some of the things that are going on in our field and possibly in your life. I hope you enjoy today's episode. Let's get into it. Hello, everyone. Harry Koster here with today Marlene Gomez, one of our physical therapists. Welcome, Marlene. Hi, thank you for having me. So today we're going to talk about misconceptions in physical therapy. Um, I think it's very appropriate. October is National Physical Therapy Month. It's when we really celebrate our profession. So I think it's good to talk a little bit about that. And um, I saw a study where they got the opinion that people had about physical therapy. And it was always very positive, but people didn't really know what we do. And we definitely see that in the clinic where people just don't really know what we do and, and how to access and everything. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, so one of the things that a lot of times people think that they have to have a referral from their you know, doctor, right? Is that correct? Um, no. Um, it depends on the state, too. It's a little bit of, I always say, every state varies. Um, but here in Texas, for example, we do have direct access. So you don't need uh, to go see your physician or get a referral before accessing physical therapy. Um, a lot of that for right now in Texas, we are limited for how many times, we, how many days we can treat a patient without a referral, but we absolutely can do an evaluation um, and treat for a certain amount of time um, before requiring a referral from a physician, which most of the time patients are very appropriate to start physical therapy. And it's um, something that they don't have to, um, you know, it saves them time and it saves them also like, you know, some money from having to go see the physician first if they know that they need to come here or they're gonna benefit from coming here anyway. And I think sometimes that's not just a little bit of money that they're saving. And then again, there's studies out there that really show that it's so much cheaper if you go direct access to physical therapy. Because if you go to your doctor, a lot of times they'll, you know, they're, they're maybe not sure about things. So they send you for an x-ray, uh, maybe even an MRI. So you're looking at all this money spent already that, and a lot of times there's problems that when we get them early on, we can actually solve them in a couple of weeks or so. Yeah. So definitely, you know, we encourage people, if you have a you know, problem, you know, come see us first. A lot of times we can get, you know, pretty good, even though we can't diagnose it, we have a pretty good idea of what's going on. And a lot of times we can treat it right then and there. So definitely that's something. And, and I'm glad we were able to change that in Texas. We didn't have direct access until two years ago. So I'm definitely glad that we have that, you know, direct access for our patients that they can just come see us. And we're seeing that more and more that people just call us up and like, hey, I know you can help me. So can I come in today or tomorrow? And yeah. not, not have to wait several weeks. So good. Um, one of the things that we see sometimes too is where people, you know, wonder if we have to do an evaluation, right? They'll say, well, you know, my doctor told you what's wrong with me, or I have the MRI that shows me, you know, what's, what's wrong with me, but that's not really what we do, right? We do a, a, a thorough evaluation. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yes. So, um, we do get that frequently with patients who come in and they're like, well, you know, my, my doctor told me that this is the diagnosis he gave me. Like, um, sometimes it's very general, um, sometimes it's very specific. Um, or they come in with imaging studies that um, MRIs and they have all these things that are that are in there or, you know, arthritis and then all these, you know, anything that you'll find um, normally. Herniated discs, bulging yeah. discs, you know, all yeah. of that stuff. Even, even people that don't have pain, they have something yeah. in, their, in their spine, um, arthritis, anything. Um, so a lot of the times, though, we do the evaluation and most of the time it's not the, the pain generator is not what's on the image. Um, especially when, when you're moving. Things are different when you're moving as opposed to if you're just you know, still in an MRI or an X-ray. Um, the evaluation is meant for us to find you know, what is potentially causing the pain um, through the movement patterns that we're examining. Um, we're examining all the impairments that they may have in mobility, um, strength, um, muscle flexibility, um, just any dysfunction in their musculoskeletal system that's contributing to their pain. Um, that tells us a lot more um, of how we could treat it um, as opposed to just a uh, static image. Yeah, and then I think a lot of times what we're looking at isn't necessarily I'm going to fix your arthritis because we can't, but how can we make you move better with less pain, go back to the things that you want to do and that you need to do in life yeah. um, and do them effectively and, and you know, uh, in the best way possible. And that's really what our evaluation is about. So how are you moving? What are your impairments? And also, where do you need to go, right? What, yeah. what do you want to go back to? You want to go back to playing golf. You want to go back to lifting the grandkids. You want to go back to work, all those things. 
you know, and a lot of times to help prevent this problem from coming back again. So it really takes a thorough evaluation to find out, you know, what led you here to begin with, what's the problem, and where do you need to go? Yeah. You know, right. so, so yes, that's why we do a full evaluation. Our evaluation a lot of times takes like 45 minutes to really get mm -hmm. to the bottom of everything. Yeah. So, um, and I find a lot of times just pa patients will tell us that nobody's ever looked at them in that much detail. That is true. Or even just um, like physically examining the, examining the body part, like the shoulder, and you actually like, you know, have to, um, with your hands, examine the shoulder, examine the back, and you're like, well, no one ever like even touched me. Um, and that does tell you a lot. Um, and another part of it is that we then, you know, we document all of that, and then we use it towards the end as we're, you know, examining, re-examining them um, consistently um, to see how far they've come, what has improved, and that does tell us a lot as well. Yeah, yeah, it's not just a well. I guess it kind of feels good when it comes to physical therapy, but no, we're actually you know evaluating, make sure you make the progress that you need to make to to meet your goals. So, absolutely. So um, next, let's talk a little bit about pain. Um, I've been called a pain and torture guy and stuff like that, jokingly, but so does physical therapy have to be painful? Um, not exactly. So, um, you know, and just going back to that, um, I always hear that joke about, you know, terrorists, the different reasons. Physical yeah. terrorists, right, is what our <laughs> abbreviation of PT stands for. Yep, I've heard that one yep. too. Um, but no, so the thing is that um, there's a certain level of discomfort and yeah, you know, sometimes you're going to have pain when you're going through therapy, but it's, we're not here to, you know, put just, you know, with the intent of putting you through pain. Um, we are um, trained to gauge, you know, how you're responding to the certain treatments that we're doing. Um, and then we meant to modify um, how we treat you depending on how your symptoms are responding. So things are going to be uncomfortable, okay? Especially if you're in pain, you're not going to want to move. Um, but once you start moving, and if you think about it, a joint has to move for, for um, you know, the way it's supposed to move for even just a couple of days, it's going to feel uncomfortable if you're trying to move it, especially if you're coming from injury or a surgery. Um, it's not going to be, you know, all sunshine and rainbows, um, but it's necessary and it's important to be um, consistent with it, um, you know, to ultimately regain um, your function. Um, another important part of that is um, communicating with your therapist about any concerns um, that you're having, you know, because we were also meant to reassure you um, in the direction that we're going. But then also we're trained to see anything that's abnormal. So if you just have this really exaggerated pain response or any new symptoms that are not consistent with what we did, um, then then that's when you you know pay attention to and modify or you know refer you somewhere else if it's needed. Exactly, and then you know obviously if you just had a total knee replacement and we need to stretch to get your range of motion back, there's going to be some pain involved. We expect that. Uh, we do everything we can to make it not as painful as maybe you expect it to, but. You know, yeah, definitely if there's an abnormal pain response, then we, we take action immediately, we modify your program, or, or like you said, sometimes, you know, send you somewhere else. And we have so many different modalities that, that can help with pain that we don't rely on to make somebody better, but we have heat, we have ice, we have electrical stimulation, you know, all those kind of things. Um, so absolutely, we, we can help with that, okay. you know, so uh, I think in general, our patients kind of joke about it. We ask their pain level when they first come in not in the middle of therapy, mm -hmm. right? But we'll ask for the pain level again afterwards and it's actually almost always better. Yeah. You know, so yeah, therapy is not necessarily painful. There may be some pain and discomfort involved. And I tell my patients, if you're sore, that's a good thing. That means we, yeah. we worked on some muscles that probably needed it yeah. and that haven't had it in a while, so. That's very common actually too, um, especially if someone's never exercised before, um, they're gonna have soreness and they may interpret that as you know, it's uncomfortable, so they may interpret it as pain. Um, so it's important to then educate the patient and explain, you know, the difference between between both. Of yeah, those. we definitely dig into that because you know, stretching is that painful? I don't think stretching is painful, but some people do perceive it as pain. So, and, and then again, we need to reassure them that oh, I was just gonna, you know, be a little uncomfortable while I'm stretching you, but then afterwards you're better. I mean, it's it feels better and it moves better. So I think that's a key thing. So good. Um, now. Who, who is a good candidate for, for physical therapy? Do you have to have had a surgery or, or a car accident or something like that, an injury, or are there other people that can benefit from physical therapy? Um, there is a 
everyone pretty much can benefit from therapy. There's a variety of conditions that we can treat. Um, even if you're pain free, um, you can still benefit from therapy. Um, you, don't, so you don't always have to have an injury or have had surgery or had an accident or just be in pain to have physical therapy. Um, for example, patients who have you know, balance issues and their potential fall risk, um, vertigo, which you know things that we've discussed before in previous videos and mm -hmm. podcasts that we've done. Um, and then just any movement dysfunction, um, even injury prevention. So a lot of times people can come in with pain or maybe very mild pain, but there's a lot of things that we then find in the evaluation that either contributed to the pain that they had before, um, the pain they have currently, and then they get better, they don't have any more pain. And there's still things that we need to address because if not, they're either gonna get back into the same problem or they're gonna develop a new, new issue. Yeah, so I, I see sometimes that we're working with kids who, yeah, they don't have pain, but the way they're moving, the way they're squatting, the way they're running is just not good. And we know at some point they're gonna have an injury and I'd rather see them in the clinic before that so we can work on their, their movement patterns and, and really the way their, their body you know, moves and, and that they get you know, to be aware of that you know, and prevents major injuries from happening because a lot of times that's what leads to injuries like ACL tears and everything, mm -hmm. so. And that's another important um, thing is during the like therapy um, sessions and then just the whole treatment program, you know, people sometimes stop when they stop having pain, they're like, I feel better, I don't need this anymore. Um, and they stop coming or they're like, no, I don't really need it. And they call you and they tell you, oh, I'm fine now. But in reality, there's still impairments that we need to work on. Um, and then you see them back again later on. Yeah, unfortunately. And then I try to educate my patients really on the, you know, four stages of healing, you know, in a physical therapy world, you know, because in the beginning when you come in, you have a lot of pain, well, that's the first thing we need to address. So we're going to address your pain and swelling and all those things. That's like the first step. Uh, then the second step is let's start working on your mobility. So we're, we we'll work on the range of motion of your shoulder, or maybe the flexibility of your, your leg muscles or neck muscles or whatever, you know, so we got to address that. Then the next step would be to start working on strengthening, you know, everything surrounding your injuries. And then the last step is really going back to functional movements, you know, whatever activities that you need to go back to, as well as preventing this stuff from happening. When you do go back, you know, you go back on the golf course, make sure you don't re-injure your back. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times patients, you know, yeah, they, they're like, hey, I've, I've met that first phase, my pain is better, so I'm good. But inevitably, we see them back, you know, a couple of weeks, a couple of months later, you know, or they go back and, you know, they'll go back to the doctor and say, well, yeah, my pain is better, but no, I'm still not playing golf or lifting my grandkids or whatever they needed to do. So we definitely encourage people to go through all those, those different phases yeah. and make sure they complete the whole plan of care, not just part of it. Yeah, we see that too many times, I think. You know, um, I think something else that we see that patients come in and really kind of have a passive, passive attitude about therapy is like, well, just make me better or, you know, and so then you get in people's expectations, well, just give me some heat and stem and massage my back and mm -hmm. maybe you can stretch me and that's gonna fix everything. Yeah. Uh, that's not really true, is it? No, no, and um, I'm pretty sure every physical therapist, is, you know, we've encountered someone that says, hey, can you just, you know, you, know, so you give people stretches, can you pop my back, do you do massages, um, so things like that. And some patients come in with, um, you know, the expectation that that's all therapy is, is just, you know, passive, passive techniques, um, and that's not the case. Um, it does require a lot of active participation from the patient um, and commitment and consistency to get better. So yeah, there's passive techniques that we use. Um, people, you know, refer to massage, you know, the manual therapy techniques that we use either for um, addressing, you know, tight muscles, um, joint mobility. Um, yes, maybe passive stretches. Um, some of those things may be emphasized early on to control pain. Of course. Um, but then eventually the, the main goal is getting you back to function, which requires active movement um, and exercises, which some, you know, some people still are kind of caught off guard by that. Like, well, why, why do I have to do this? Like, you have to fix me. Yeah, nope, nope, we, we don't fix anybody. I tell patients, I am not gonna fix you. I'm gonna help you fix yourself. And yeah, I think the massage question probably, you know, happens before people come in and see us. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think any of my patients ever, you know, think that I'm giving a massage because once they met my thumbs they know that that's not you know the feel-good massage that they're, they're expecting so 
Yeah, because that's not what we do. Do we do massages? Well, yeah, we do in a way. Mm -hmm. We do soft tissue mobilization, but I don't think anybody uh, really mistakes that for massage once we're doing it. It's different. <laughs> yeah, but they, they do have that, that question at the beginning, like, oh, are you going to massage me? And like, yeah, no, not really. That's not what we do. There's massage therapists out there that can do that. But yeah, really, you know, physical therapy takes that active approach. Um, what percentage would you say of your patients get a home program? Call them, have to right, hundred percent. Yeah, like that's 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 not a, you know not an exception. I mean, everybody gets a home program of, of things they need to do to to help their progress. Because um, physical therapy may be two or three times a week. Good, it's helpful, but you know I really want you to do you know some form of therapy, some form of exercises, to probably every day. Mm -hmm. Right. So good. So now that we we're on the subject of exercises. Um, so we're doing a bunch of exercises, right? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, can I just go to the gym and do it on my own or get a personal trainer and do that? It, wouldn't that be the same? No, it's not the same. So that's the opposite side of the spectrum where we get that expectation of, well, you know, these exercises, you know, I can just do them at home, especially now with, you know, YouTube and mm -hmm. videos that you can find online on exercises, um, things that you can look up online in general. Um, people think like, well, you know, if I'm going to go to therapy and, you know, I can just do these on my own. Um, I don't need this. Um, but in reality, um, a lot of times, you know, you may think that, yeah, maybe I get a little bit better if I do, you know, some exercises on my own, but eventually you're going to encounter a problem. Either you're not doing them properly, um, even if you think you are, you know, at what point are you going to progress? Um, it's not just a specific joint that you need to address um, if you're coming in, for example, for your knee. Um, if you're trying to address your knee, we have to look at the entire body, the entire limb, um, and address specific impairments at all those those areas, not just a specific joint. Um, so yeah, so it's not just something that you can do on your own. Um, we are meant to guide you through the specific movements to make sure you're doing them properly, um, you know, gauge to what point you're able to progress um, or regress if we need to, um, or implement different strategies, for example, either manual techniques or dry needling, anything like that. Um, and then ultimately, again, get you back to function. So definitely core of what we're doing is exercises, but it's, it's a very well designed program and we, we don't have anything off the shelf, mm -hmm. right? Somebody comes in and they go, oh, here's your exercise protocol. Never. You know, we do, you know, it's, it's all based on the individual findings that we have with the patient um, of, the, of the injury, but also all the surrounding joints, but also kind of your history of, you know, like maybe you've done things before that have, have injured you or, you know, and that constant adjustment of the exercises. I mean, the exercises really are never exactly the same. We progress the exercises, we change them, you know, really based on what we find for the patient, the patient's needs and, mm -hmm. and what we need to work towards. And that's what really what sets us apart from, you know, a personal trainer. And that's what really, there's some really good personal trainers out there that I love working with because they can definitely enhance what the patients are doing mm -hmm. and down the road probably taking, you know, taking it over. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of science behind what we're doing as far as the exercise prescription. Um, exercise itself, yeah, that's not rocket science, but you know, the ones that, you know, get applied in the right way, you know, and doing it at the right moment. I think that's, that's the science behind what we're doing. And then, like you said, together with all the other things that we're doing, mm -hmm. you know, it's manual therapy plus exercises or it's dry needling plus exercise, all those things. So, you know, absolutely. Um, now, a lot of times when we discharge patients, and I think we've talked about changing language, maybe to graduating, maybe that's better because oh. mm -hmm. you know, maybe patients shouldn't be done with us, but, um, so what happens after that? So we, we fixed them, right? No, we didn't fix them. We helped them fix themselves. But, you know, so then what? Should they just stop and, you know, they're, they're good to go from then on? Um, not exactly. So a lot of times people will have that, um, also that expectation that, you know, they feel better, um, they're doing better, they return to, you know, their, their previous function or they're able to do um, what they wanted to do. Um, and then they're like, well, I'm done with therapy. So, you know, that's it. I can just, you know, not worry about it anymore at all. Um, and that's not the case. So we do still um, encourage, oh, obviously, an active lifestyle. We don't want people to be sedentary um, for overall, you know, health. But then also, if you go back to those um, specific habits, those bad postures, those faulty movement patterns, um, you know, you allow, allow yourself to become sedentary, go back to getting those muscles that you worked on previously, weak, um, you get back, you know, to not moving the joints specifically the way that we, you know, you know, taught you, um, you get back into those same issues that either will lead you right back to the same problem you were having or you're going to create a new problem. Um, so there's things that you're going to have to keep up with um, to maintain the progress that you made. 
Um, so that's where like another home exercise program comes into play. Um, you know, we're also meant to teach you different things that you can implement on your own to either manage your symptoms um, or you, again, maintain your progress. It's not something you just want to let go. Yeah. Yeah. And there's really a lot of education behind what we're doing. You know, really help somebody set up for success so the problem doesn't come back. I mean, yes, if it comes back, you can come see us again. But our goal is really just to, to have you independent and keep up with it. And, you know, who wouldn't want a, a body that's flexible and strong and, and healthy to do things? And I think with, with people getting older and older, um, people really want that good lifestyle. Um, I think I've, said, I've talked about this with one of my patients and uh, recently about when I was younger, people that were in their 70s and 80s were really pretty sedentary and now you see people in their 80s and they want to be out on the golf you know, mm -hmm. course or they want to play tennis and they want to stay active um, and, and really if you want that now is the time whatever age you are now is the time to really set yourself up for that that's true so. i think we've also kind of seen that um recently um, especially after the pandemic and during the pandemic where people had to mostly they became inactive we did see the impact of inactivity and just, you know, sedentary lifestyle, either patients that were previously active and they just like, well, I'm going to stay home now. And they, they're coming in like, hey, I'm in pain now. And oh, like I've noticed that like I've lost, I'm losing my balance more. And it started when we had to stay home. Yep. So. Yeah, because that's now gone on for, for a long time. And we're definitely seeing, we even see that with school kids. I think we yeah. talked about that in one of our earlier podcasts. It's like how much we're seeing with school kids that have been in Zoom school, you know, virtual learning, you know, yeah, they weren't nearly as active and now they're trying to be active again and all sorts of aches and pains, you know, are coming out. So yeah, absolutely. So, you know, good. Um, anything else you got to add? Another misconception that you can think of? Um, not at the moment. I'm sure there's more, but those are the, the common yeah. ones that I've encountered. <laughs> yeah, I think we run into a lot of these things. So um, we, we definitely will continue to educate people on really what physical therapy is because I think we have such a beautiful profession that we can help people get better naturally, right? We take them away from medication and surgeries and injections and everything. And that's why I love, you know, what we do. So that's why we, we're glad to celebrate National Physical Therapy Month, the whole month of October. Um, so if you have any questions, give us a call. Uh, thank you, Marlene, for being part of my, my podcast here and looking forward to the next one.